Hi, everybody. Welcome to Queers and Soaps. I'm Tommy, and once again, I am joined by Eric. Hello. A.K.A. Angie. And Angela has joined us again. <laughs> um, uh, once again, we are back for Don't Touch My Grapes. We are discussing Season 2, Episodes 14, 15, and 16. So I will roll the credits, and we will get... Episode 14 is titled Above Suspicion. Uh, Angela is done with hearing about this paternity test results because it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. uh, she tells Lance to stay away from that tramp in San Francisco, a.k.a. Lori. I don't want to hear another word about your test results. You are that child's legal father. But I... Will you please take on some responsibilities? Angela, I have good news for you. And if I hear of you seeing that little tramp in San Francisco, get ready to pack your bags. Am I understood? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Philip has found Emma, who has applied for a driver's license in Texas. <laughs> and now that I think about it, Emma wasn't in these three episodes at all. I gotta stop doing that. Emma. Damn, I didn't realize she was gone for that long. Mm -hmm. I, I thought they. Time. I just didn't know when. Yeah, I thought they just kept inserting like small scenes, like they had been throughout the season. Yeah. But I guess not. She comes up again soon, I think. I Good. <laughs> um. Yeah, weird without her. Angela inserts herself in Philip's plans to go sailing. She's like, oh, you're going sailing? I'd love to sail. I'd love to join you. <laughs> I'd love to sail. He's like, uh, no. <laughs> uh, I didn't know you like sailing. Maybe another time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff Dan comes to see Chase because he's seen... Oh, because Chase has been seen or has been asking a lot of questions about the Agretti case because he's trying to clear Cole's name officially and find who, who the real murderer is. Yeah. Lance is venting to Julia that Angela is unaffected by the DNA results. <laughs> and I wrote this, even though it's not really what she said, but I always think of you being like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so my note is Julia says, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> How could she just ignore it? Those test results proved I wasn't the father, and she just tore them up like they didn't mean anything. Well, they don't mean anything to her. Have you been watching Julia carefully through these? I have. These ones, I've been watching her body language and her face. Mm -hmm. um, it's working, right? You can tell something's going on. <laughs> yeah. I'll know it when we get to it, but there was a point where I was like, it was obvious. <laughs> <laughs> right? So yeah, um, like you kind of see. You see all the stuff she's doing, and it's, it is obvious. He says he's in love with Lori, and she tells him she loved his father that much, but she could never get up the courage to leave Falcon Crest. And I'm like, I know. Every time I think you're going to leave, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Melissa walks in. Lance, yeah. That is true. Yeah. As much as he says he can't stand Alvin Krauss. Um, Melissa walks in and says he'll never leave Falcon Krauss because he's addicted to the money, the power, and he wants it all, money, power, and happiness. Uh, Melissa has dinner with Richard and is very flirty. Uh, they almost kiss Philip convinces Angela to stay home instead of going sailing. <laughs> <laughs> In case there's more news about Emma. He has her believing that he's working in his office, but she calls his office and finds out that he's out of the office for the week. Uh, 
office, mister. Mr. Erickson, please. The offices are closed. This is the answering service. It's Saturday. I know it's Saturday. Mr. Erickson is in his office, I believe. I am sorry, but Mr. Erickson won't be in until Monday. Is there a message? No. No messages. Thank you. I feel, yeah, well, she, I feel like she sensed that he was seeing somebody. And, and I feel like she's getting, je this is how Angela gets jealous. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. she's like, you know what I mean? Like, it just almost seems like she's jealous because she actually cares for Philip, but she can't admit her feelings. Right. Because she, she acts like a dick. <laughs> these episodes. <laughs> um, Chase and Cole go to the Agredi estate to question the groundskeeper, and they find out that he quit a week ago. Mr. Fong. <laughs> Charlie asks Lance if he's been working on his inner peace. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, no, I've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lance breaks the bad news to Lori after they make love that the DNA test doesn't matter to Angela. <laughs> yeah, he had to get another piece. <laughs> a very familiar gloved hand is typing a note to the in the Giaberti house when Maggie comes home with groceries. They hide and they grab a knife. But they're able to escape without being seen, and they leave the front door. This felt like a very like eighties horror movie scene, the way it was shot. Mm -hmm. I was actually nervous. And knowing who th who it is eventually, I'm like, is she gonna just like cut everybody up? Like <laughs> <laughs> I know. I remember when I first watched this, I was creeped out. <laughs> when I first I was like, Holy shit. Like that's what got me hooked, you know? I was just like, What the hell's going on in this show? And like she likes Maggie and she was like willing to stab her. If she had yeah, to. Well. <laughs> um, does what one has to do. <laughs> I guess. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you, did we, um, oh yeah, um, remember when Philip and Lance bumped into each other in town? Did they really not think that each other was each other? Or were they just playing it off? No, they were playing it off. Oh, okay. They were both like, they know how Angela is. So oh. they both kind of, you know, he wasn't supposed to be seeing Lori, but he did. She, he doesn't want, you know, Angie knows about Amanda. So they were just like, uh, nah, that wasn't him. 
<laughs> they did. They played it off so nonchalantly that I felt like they both just were like, "Oh no, that just looks like him." <laughs> I was no, like, "No, they did it because <laughs> they." I, I feel like it was like a mutual respect. Like they were just like, "We know if Angie finds out about either of this, she will not be pleased." So there was okay. just like, a, "Oh yeah, no, that wasn't him." No. <laughs> Because <laughs> remember later on when Lance brings it up to Angie. Yeah. Um, Julia warns Melissa not to get involved in Chase's investigation. Richard calls Melissa under the guise of being a lawyer, and he asks her to dinner. I put Shannon Tweed over hears this, and she's jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon Tweed. Diana. Diana. Uh, Diana, yeah. <laughs> um, Angela tricks Lance into admitting he had lunch with Lori. She also no tells him that she knows about Philip's other women. Yeah. Vicky calls Nick to meet up because Vicky hasn't had anything to do for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um. Right. Diana calls Richard and leaves him a voicemail or a message on his answering machine um, while he's trying to get frisky with Melissa. Mm -hmm. Maggie doesn't want Chase investigating. What? She says she has to go after that, remember? Yeah. Maggie doesn't want Chase investigating anymore, and she calls him arrogant. <laughs> and then I feel like a little while later, she shows up in, like, not sexy lingerie, but, like, sexy pajamas, like, a dress, <laughs> like a night dress. And she's just like, I'm sorry, I called you arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Diana betrays Richard by ratting him out to his adoptive father about where his true loyalties lie. Mm -hmm. Angela catches Melissa sneaking in close to midnight and she tells them that their family is bonded together whether they like it or not because of the baby and the vineyards and money <laughs> yeah. Cole is pulled over by Sheriff Dan for speeding and he makes Cole do a field sobriety test. Which Cole said he had two beers. He makes him do the test and he's just like, All right, you're you're on the the edge, but I'm gonna let you go. But if he's he, impaired, why are you gonna let him go? <laughs> they didn't they didn't care back then. Until yeah, like, I was like, it's the early eighties, it's the early eighties. <laughs> She was drove drunk. Do you remember that episode? She was that when she drank on the water. beach with that stranger? Yeah. And then, uh, so me and my friend were like, oh my God, she's so going to get it because she was drunk driving and they didn't even mention it. <laughs> but even in the pilot, was wasn't Annie like, drunk? No. Yeah, I believe so. When she and brought... Cared. So yeah. That was like the time they started caring a little bit and then like later, like mid... Mid eighties, it was like hardcore. It was like don't drink and drive, but yeah, early on they didn't care. Um, so that's why he let him go. Vicky and Nick have a, a nice conversation in his old fashioned car, and they end up making out. Mm. And the gloved hand knocks Cole out and locks him in the garage with the car running, so that he'll die from carbon monoxide poisoning.
I forgot about that part. Crazy, right? <laughs> Is it the same sweater? I forgot about that part. I totally forgot about it. It's the same, it's the same sweater. Mm -hmm. I was like, this looks familiar. It also reminds me of Mrs. Voorhees' sweater for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> this sweater is a big part of something coming up very soon. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. I don't remember so. <laughs> oh, you'll see. It's it's really it's kind of funny actually when you watch it. So <laughs> we'll discuss. <laughs> um Chase and Maggie are in bed and I forgot what he thinks he asked if she left something on because I guess he smells the gas. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It ended with, uh, Cole being knocked out Unconscious, yeah. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have anything else on that episode? No, I think we covered everything, I, I believe, yeah. Okay. So episode 15 is no, called... No Emma. Yeah, no Emma. Episode 15 is called Broken Promises. And this is when Chase smells the gas. And he finds Cole unconscious in the garage. I put Vicky and Nick have taken it to the back seat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she seems... I don't know if they did anything, because she still seemed pretty, like, you know, put together. She didn't really... She wasn't, like, putting her clothes back on or anything like that. Yeah, I know. I guess it was, uh, I guess it was just... Because, you know, there's not that separation in the front seat as there is in the front seat. So I guess mm -hmm. it's easier to make out in the back. I guess. I think I had to, I think I said that they had, they went to lookout point. So, uh, so Vicky and Nick go to late lookout point. There's always like a lookout point when people want to make out. Philip is out with Amanda. And I think she said she's married to a politician. Or he's into politics and power, which yes. made me think he was a politician. That's what I put. I said, um, Amanda and Philip have a romantic evening. We find out she has a husband. We did not know that. No, we didn't. Uh, Sheriff Dan gives Chase an apparent suicide note from Cole that was found in his pocket. Angela makes a dig at them, saying she's surprised they didn't see how troubled Cole was. She's always got to be a mm -hmm. dick. <laughs> <laughs> always, right? <laughs> Richard... Like a backhanded compliment. She said something afterward, and he's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, thank you? <laughs> um, Richard comes to the hospital and offers any medical help he can get any doctors he could have flown in. He he mentions knowing about the note, and Chase asks him to please keep it out of the globe. And he says yes, but doesn't he say a dickhead thing after that? Oh, we don't want to make her. I forget. Something along the lines of making it look like it's already Cole's fault or something. I forget. Something like that. Lance says suicide isn't Cole's. Lance says suicide isn't Cole's style, and this is one of the moments because Julia's like, "But there was a note." Like she's like, "So that obviously it is." <laughs> but the way she said it, and knowing what I know, I'm like, mm, "I could see." <laughs> Did you see? I like the the one line um, Angela says when Richard comes to the hospital. Says. Uh, Maggie says, cuts him off and says, it was very nice of you to come. And she's like, but unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> nice, but unnecessary. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> These little moments are great. One of my reporters heard the ambulance call over his radio and notified me. Well, wouldn't you know Richard, you it was very nice of you to come. And unnecessary. Um... Angela thinks that if he dies, Carlo's murder, murder case will be closed and shut. Mm -hmm. So. She's very yeah, sad, obviously. Shut so badly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Richard's adoptive father, Henry Denall, was that his name? 
I never know if I'm saying his last name correctly, so I just, I just call him his adoptive father. <laughs> And he wants him to return to New York because of his failure to deliver anything substantial to the company or organization. Right. But he's really there because Diana called him in. Right? Yeah. He says the decision comes from higher up and Richard is surprised that there is someone else above him. And he wants to know who it is and his father tells him, he's like, I've only ever seen them maybe twice in the whole time I've worked for the company. Um, isn't it Jacqueline? Uh, possibly. <laughs> I feel like she's revealed to be involved somehow in the company. She is. I, I just assumed it was her because of the reveal later, but I guess we'll see. Somebody else above him because it does continue on after he goes somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything. Lance, tell, Lance tells Melissa he's meeting with a lawyer to talk about divorcing her. Um, same fight. Same fight. Same fight. Happen. You know, Angela's not going to be so happy about this. <laughs> right. You're not leaving. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, he says he says something like it'll be worth a couple of bucks to get you out of here. <laughs> a couple million bucks. <laughs> yeah, right. Um Sheriff Dan tells Maggie and Chase that the note was written on the typewriter in their house and he's sending it to the DA as evidence in Carlo's murder case. And during this time Cole was in a coma, right? Yeah. Yeah, Cole wakes up and mumbles someone hit him. Yeah, I like that he did that right when he woke up. That was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, someone hit me. They're like, what? Like, yeah, he's awake, yeah. Richard tells Melissa he knows that she spends a lot of time with Cole before her marriage. And that Immaculate Conception is a novel concept these days. <laughs> I put the detective that Chase hires to try and clear Cole's name and get evidence was on Dallas. Do you remember him? Mm -hmm. I do in the first, in the mini series, I think the the first season. Yeah, he was in um, three Charlie's Angels episodes too. Really? I thought he was in General Hospital because I on that, but I I think I got him. He looks what similar to another guy. <laughs> That's why I looked them up. He could have been. A lot of these actors hops from back and forth from daytime to prime time. He he wasn't. I looked them up just to see because I'm like he looks so familiar, but he is in a ton of stuff that we've seen already. So. There's an actor I can't remember his name or even the character he played, but he was on Dallas, and I think he was a lawyer for the Ewings, and he was on Days after. In like eighty four. Oh, nice. So they they like a bit. they hopped back and forth, yeah. Um. Hmm. Melissa visits Cole. He wants to be in Joseph's life, and Melissa says, "All he needs right now is her and Falcon Crest." <laughs> and Cole is determined to have shared custody or be involved somehow. Um, Near death made him uh, want to be a father. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa and Richard have crossed the line of sleeping together. And she accepts a deal for him to buy her, her land to pay off the taxes and the loans that she took from, or her father took from Angela. With the divorce. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I think she was going to sell. Because it seemed, you know, the way she seemed like it was going to happen. 
Well, because remember when, like, when, when Lance talks to her, she, like, gets that face, like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. they won't need me here. Yeah. So then she changes her tune pretty quick. So Vicky brings Nick lunch and Sheila catches them together and gets upset. And I'm like, bitch, you have boyfriends. Like, you come home after staying out on me. What? <laughs> right. I know. So weird. But then, okay, so... I'm not sure if I can't remember if this happened before the scene or after. But Nick and Vicky go out to lunch at a restaurant and they think that they're alone, like they have privacy, but um Julia and Angela are there and they notice them. I'm not sure if that was before or after the scene. I think that was before. <laughs> so Angela kind of impresses on Melissa that they have to keep the Gretti vineyards in the family. And Melissa agrees, but she has a different take on it. She wants Angela to pay the taxes and forgive her loans. But yeah, she won't sell it to Richard, but she's also not selling it to Angela. She's going to be in control. So it's going to stay in the family as long as Lance and her stay married. Mm -hmm. See, it's like she she's thought about it a little bit. And then yeah. she pissed Richard off. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that. I felt like she was like a boss in that scene. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. She was. Um. The detective that Chase hires calls him and gives him a description that the landskeeper said that he saw on, at the Agretti estate the day of the murder. And he's basically describing Cole. Yep. So I wonder who paid him. <laughs> you think Julia paid him? Yes. Well, maybe. Well. <laughs> Quite possible. I mean, the killer probably paid him. <laughs> Whoever that killer is. Hmm. I think the first time that I watched this, I didn't think Carlo was dead. I felt like he was going to be like alive by the end. Um, I didn't because when I watched it, I just didn't because I feel like I can't when I. When I first watched it, that's why I'm partial to later seasons. I, I started in season seven. Oh. So I watched season seven, eight, and nine. Mm -hmm. So I only knew that stuff, you know? And um, that's why I'm, I like those seasons, even though a lot of fans are not big fans of those, because it did get, like, a totally different feel in those seasons. Like, I, uh. I mean, like, I guess I can't really go into details, because I mean, <laughs> but anyway, when we get up to that, I will um, discuss more about that. But um, yeah, so when I wa started, you know, watching over, I didn't know what was going to happen because I'll say maybe some characters disappear by season seven. And eight. Right. So a lot of people I didn't even know. You didn't know, you know when right? I was watching. So when I watched season two and uh, the killer was around, I was like, holy shit! I didn't know who was going to die or, or what was going to happen. Like. That's why I was so hooked on it. I just I loved it. I feel like most of the majority of the main cast was gone by season seven. <laughs> Except for like maybe like two or three people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does feel like a totally different show. It does. I mean, it's still around, you know, like Falcon Crest and all, but it's not the way it was in the first six seasons. For sure. Yeah. All right. Episode 16 is called Deliberate Disclosure. And although we didn't get to see, like, Richard's reaction, this is him reacting to um, Melissa not selling him the land. He has printed a cover story revealing Cole is the father of Joseph at, on, in the Globe. Um, this is when, um, I'm sorry if you can hear, it sounds like somebody's, like, cutting down a tree outside right now. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, no, <laughs> okay, well, sorry to the listeners if you can hear me. <laughs> um, so this is when Angela kind of threatens Lance for the millionth time 
that he'll be cut out of the will or Falcon Crest if the divorce goes through or whatever. I know um, she kicked him out, but I guess not at that point. Not at that point. <laughs> morning. Well, you're cheerful this morning. <laughs> yes, I am. And you can read all about it. Accused murderer, father's Falcon Crest heir. <laughs> Let me see that. Oh, no. <laughs> I'd say this lets me off the hook, wouldn't you? You know, it's not true, Lance. Richard just printed that because I wouldn't sell on my father's property. Richard is just being childish and spiteful. He can't get a foothold in this valley, so he's taking it out on Melissa. But how could he print this? What evidence has he got? Oh, he's got evidence, all right. A copy of the paternity test results that I gave him. What? Just like Richard. Childish and spiteful and your own worst enemy. Well, all I know is what I read in the papers. Well, try this for a headline. Angela Channing's grandson, Lance Compson. Disinherited. Have some orange juice, Lance. All right. Episode 16 is called Deliberate Disclosure. And although we didn't get to see, like, Richard's reaction, this is him reacting to um, Melissa not selling him the land. He has printed a cover story revealing Cole is the father of Joseph at, on in the Globe. Um, this is when... Um, I'm sorry if you can hear. It sounds like somebody's like cutting down a tree outside right now. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, well, sorry to the listeners if <laughs> you can hear it. <laughs> um, so this is when Angela kind of threatens Lance for the millionth time that he'll be cut out of the will or Falcon Crest. If the divorce goes through or whatever. I know um, she kicked him out, but I guess not at that point. Not at that point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maggie's script has been optioned and she received a $25,000 check. I know, right? That came out of nowhere. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I thought we were done with this. I was like, oh, it's back. <laughs> I know. I like her better as a reporter. Yeah, same. But um, I did, I did like um, the situation that she was put in, and how that lady. Well, we'll talk about it in a minute. Yeah. Think it's totally there. Angela wants to acquire the McKay Vineyards because the owner is dying. Yeah. Elliot uh -huh. McKay. I put Angie visits a dude because I didn't. <laughs> a dude. <laughs> <laughs> Chase doesn't want to take advantage of a dying man and Angela lets it slip that Vicky is having an affair with a married man disgracing the family <laughs> that's a slip she, she tells him straight out yeah, um, Vicky's an embarrassment get your daughter under control <laughs> Chase and Maggie confront Vicky about Nick and of course they're not approving and Vicky has to do the I love him. <laughs> um, and Chase has his own talk with Nick to voice his displeasure with the relationship. Um, he basically wants to sway Nick, I feel like, away, you know, because he's the bigger man, I guess. Yeah, and he kind of like. Nick says he won't hurt her. He kind of also like insinuates that he knows why he voted the way he did for the park. He, like, mentions the car and everything. Um, I mean, the guy blew up his car. What would you do? <laughs> I mean, that's a big threat. Right. If you could blow up a car and get away with it, sorry, I'll do whatever you want me to as well. <laughs> sorry, Chase. <laughs> Philip, Philip has been blowing Angela off when it comes to their dates and spending time with her. So Angela and Julia are out on the town, and they decide to make a stop at Philip's place at 11.30 at night. <laughs> <laughs> I love this scene. It was great. 
and they catch Philip with Amanda. But Angela just, she doesn't even like react emotionally. She's just like a dick about it. She's just like, oh, I just wanted to make sure that you were on top of the McKay vineyards. <laughs> You're doing everything possible to get the McKay vineyards. <laughs> Uh-huh. Angela. Good evening, Philip. You missed a stunning performance. Puccini is such a master at intrigue and passion. But I suppose you see a lot of that in your work. I don't believe you know each other. This is Angela Channing, Amanda Croft. We've met. McKay won't sell to me, Philip. So I want you to make a blind bid on the property through a third party. Couldn't this have waited until morning? Well, the world changes in 12 hours, Philip, and I don't want to take that chance. Then you could have called. This is hardly your style. It's hardly yours either. <laughs> this looks like a long business meeting. I really should be going home anyway. Mother, please, we should go too. I'm not finished. This is uh, Angela's jealousy and pettiness. <laughs> totally. Angela uh, is so embarrassed. Julia's <laughs> <laughs> uh, mother, we should leave. Right. And she even apologizes to Philip for her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lance has served Melissa with divorce papers. She once again says Angela won't be happy and he doesn't care. Melissa brings Chase Carlo's confidential papers so that he could maybe look for clues as to who could have murdered him. Um, so this is why I like that dynamic of Chase and Melissa. I always feel like he's like a father figure to her after Carlo was killed. Even though, you know, he doesn't, she doesn't really get along with Maggie too well. <laughs> um, Obviously. <laughs> Maggie meets with some people to location scout for her script. And Daryl's back. <laughs> he shows up. He shows up and it's revealed that he's an exec uh, he's a director on the project. And he offers Maggie an exec. God. Probably because he was the one that was shopping the book around, the script around. Yeah, I guess somebody, whatever, I guess like the movie company had to pick it up and then they got the money. I mean, I don't really know how all that works, but... Yeah, same. Um, he offers Maggie an executive producing role on the project. And she immediately is like, nope, not doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of the... Yeah, she's like telling her like if you don't, if you're not involved, you know they're already proposing rewrites. It's not going to be the story that you wrote. Don't, this is about yeah. your family. Don't you want it to be that? Um, she's like, <laughs> she said he's been hitting on me for years, and I'm not even his type. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So she said between the two of us, she says between the two of us, we can keep him in check. <laughs> But I like that. That's a, like, what was that? 1982, you know, for um, yeah. women empowerment. I thought that was like a good move. I like that. Yeah. Um, Chase and Melissa find a threatening letter from Angela to Carlo. So now they suspect that maybe Angela was involved in the murder. Mm -hmm. Hence why I guess she would want it closed, you know, so quick, the way she acts. Cole sees a lawyer about his rights to Joseph, and the lawyer doesn't think that he has a case with his current legal issues. Richard visits Angela to tell her Elliot McKay died, but before he died, he sold his land to him, 
So Richard now owns that land. So him and uh, Angela are now going to be neighbors of sorts. <laughs> yeah. Chase and Maggie go out to dinner, and he does not take the news of Daryl's involvement in the film project very well. And came on to the plate and they kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa puts on a dramatic show that she's so upset that Lance has served her with divorce papers in front of Angela. <laughs> <laughs> and that she's been trying to make it work and he just won't meet her halfway. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. And he says that he's leaving Falcon Crest. So Angela fires him and tells him to get out by the morning and he says why wait till the morning and she he she disinherits him and he says that if she does that he knows things that he, about falcon crest that he could expose and he, she says he wouldn't dare and then we get one of those dramatic freeze frames on angela's face get out <laughs> <Yeah. Ellie. laughs> <laughs> it's shit's heating up. I think we only yeah. have six episodes left, maybe. Uh yeah. Yeah, six episodes left. Mm -hmm. So there should be a lot more movement towards Carlo's uh killer. And I believe Emma will be back. I don't know if she comes back with Falcon Crest quite yet. Maybe in the last episode. Maybe. Well, yeah, I was surprised not to see her at all in any of these episodes. Because again, I just like in my mind, I just meet her like in every episode of season two. <laughs> like I knew, I knew she was recurring, so I thought maybe it would be like a every other episode thing, but I guess not. No, no, Jacqueline. Oh, Jacqueline. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant Emma. <laughs> oh, is next season when she joins the credits finally? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if it was the third or fourth season. It's third. Nice. Yeah. Um, Good stuff coming up. Do you have anything else to add on that last episode? No? Mm -hmm. All right, well... As always, you can find us on all the socials at Queers and Soaps. And join us next time for another edition of Don't Touch My Grapes. Until then, have a great weekend. Bye.